From September 26 to 30, 2016, the Künker Fall Auctions take place at our auction house in Osnabrück. In auctions 281 and 283, a comprehensive collection of coins and medals of the Popes will be dissolved. We would like to seize this opportunity and tell you a little bit about this collection field that is a favorite around the world. Clemens IV died in 1268. This piece was coined during the period of the following Sede Vacante. It is considered to be the first coin of the high medieval papacy. You can see two motives that you will encounter many more times hereafter. The upwards shows the bearded face of St. Peter, the reverse two keys. Why these motives were of such importance is exemplified on this piastra from 1645-6. It was minted in the heyday of the Counter-Reformation and sums up why the Pope was considered the head of the Catholic Church. He was the successor of St. Peter, whom Christ himself had instated as the shepherd of his church. So we see Christ blessing the kneeling Peter. The legend, in verbo tuo, is a quote from the Gospel, according to Luke. The evangelist herein tells of the calling of the fisherman Simon Peter to be the first apostle. It is written there, And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And it is precisely this man-catcher that we often see on gold coins from the early 16th century. Our specimen, a double Fiorino di Camera of Julius II, is dated between 1503 and 1513. Its obwars depicts the two keys. They still form part of the papal coat of arms today and represent the power to bind and lose which Jesus bestowed on Peter. Only the Pope and those in his service, so the message, hold the power to damn the sinner or forgive his sins, and so unlock the gates to the kingdom of heaven. After the popes had only occasionally minted coins until the early 14th century, they discovered the coins' importance during their exile in Avignon. Philip IV of France was responsible for moving the Pope's residence to Avignon in 1309. After a fierce controversy with Pope Boniface III, he had made certain that after the death of the latter, a friend of his own would be elected the new Pope. This friend called himself Clemens V and moved the papal court to Avignon. You see him on the obverse of this coin. The reverse is an imitation of the most important French circulation coin, the Gros Tournois. That is not surprising, considering that southern France had a number of highly important and very wealthy trading towns in which money already played an influential role. Even after their return to the Eternal City, Rome, the popes continued to mint coins. This grosso was minted under Martin V. With his election in 1417, on the occasion of the Council of Constance, ended the Great Western Schism. The popes of the Renaissance saw themselves as worldly rulers. They used their office to get their family members as much power as possible. Rodrigo Borgia, elected pope in 1492, was infamous for that. He called himself Alexander VI. You can see one of his double grossos here. He also had this Fiorino di Camera minted. His successor is known to everybody who has visited the Sistine Chapel in Rome, because it was Julius II who commissioned Michelangelo with a painting of it and decided to rebuild the St. Peter's Basilica. A major part of the expenditure was covered by the Bank of the Fuggers. Julius II cooperated closely with them. Since 1510, at the latest, the Fuggers also ran the papal mint, which is why you can see their mint mark, the trident, on this Julio. In 1513, a member of the Medici family, Leo X, became Pope. 
and is a member of a banker's family who optimized the organization of the papal finances. The Fuggers were permitted to mint for him only until 1515. This magnificent coin dates back to this time period. On its reverse it shows a line, in Latin Leo, with his forefoot leaning on a globe. In the exergue you can see the Fugger trident. What's more, the Fuggers held the papal privilege to sell indulgences in Germany. They turned it into an incredibly lucrative business until, in 1517, a certain Martin Luther wanted to challenge the idea that the forgiveness of sins could indeed be bought with money. Luther then initiated the Reformation and discredited the Pope. This may be one of the reasons why the mercenaries of Charles V were so inhesitant to pillage the holy city in 1527. This coin commemorates the so-called Sacco di Roma, the Sack of Rome. Clemens VIII had it minted in his safe place, the Castel Sant'Angelo, to pay off a part of the 400,000 ducats that he had promised the Lanskinets. In return, they let him escape to Bologna. This is where, two years later, this beautiful coin was minted. It is exceptional in that, for once, it doesn't show St. Peter, but the city patron of Bologna, St. Petronius. The lettering on the reverse informs us that the metal for this coin is derived from holy and profane objects, which were smelted to buy food during the famine in Bologna. The little dog indicates that part of the metal came from the Dominicans, which were also called the Hounds of God. Paul III, to whom we owe this medal with a fascinating cityscape of Rome, called the Reformation Council to Trent in order to reform the Church. The Council lasted until his fourth successor, Pius IV, ended it. By then, many evils which the reformers had fought against had been removed, and everybody should see this. In a test case, former Cardinal Carlo Caraffa was sentenced to death by the Pope. He had been the epitome of a pre-reformatory cardinal, unscrupulous, brutal, egoistic. Before, popes had used his services. Now he was executed. On this medal, his execution is linked to Jesus expelling the merchants and moneylenders from the temple. In the name of the Counter-Reformation, the representation of the papacy acquired a very special significance. The coins tell you about it. The papal quadruple coins, for instance, show the Virgin Mary surrounded by an aureole, or St. Peter and St. Paul, who lead the Church, aided by the Holy Spirit. At the same time, papal silver coins were being issued, whose richness in detail makes them look almost like medals. On the occasion of the Holy Year of 1675, for instance, this piastra was issued. It depicts a host of pilgrims in front of the Holy Door, which offers them a very special indulgence in the Holy Year. This piastra, from 1672, remembers the works which were undertaken on behalf of Clemens X in the port of Civitavecchia. In general, the cityscapes which were created by the papal mint in the period of the Enlightenment are among the most beautiful in terms of the architectural depictions on coins that we know. They show the St. Peter's Basilica, the forecourt of the Pantheon, a San Teodoro church, but also a view of the city of Urbino or the port of Ripetta. In 1870, when this 50 lira piece was minted, the Pope's rule over Rome ended. King Victor Emmanuel invaded the Papal States with his troops, disempowered the Pope and proclaimed Rome the capital of Italy. Only a few months earlier, the First Vatican Council had announced the Papal infallibility in questions of faith and morals, and at least secured him the claim to the rule over the souls. 
Today, thanks to the Lateran Treaty that was signed on February 11, 1929, by Pius XI, and Benito Mussolini, the Vatican is an independent state according to international law. It still possesses coin right and issues sought after circulation and commemorative coins. We from Auction House Künker warmly invite you to our fall auctions of 2016. Should you have any questions, do not hesitate to get in touch.